Hey, what's up, guys? Listen, it finally happened. We've been hearing rumors for weeks that Diddy's male FO victims were going to come forward and speak out about what's going on. And y'all, it finally happened. This is not a drill. Now, let me just say, I have the full court documents. This is hot off the press. You know, your girl stays nosy. Let me just say this. This case is worse than Cassie's. Now, I don't know about Cassie's experience personally, but what we are looking at is worse, worse, worse than anything that we know of that Cassie put in her complaint. Remember I talked about the Chalice Recording Studios a couple of weeks ago and the way there was some pow, pow, bang, bang? There are pictures. Literally, blood is on the floor in the bathroom. There are details. On top of this, this goes in and out of the music industry. On top of that, this is what I don't understand. Why didn't Diddy settle? Why didn't Diddy settle? The th there are pictures of Stevie J being bleeped. No, I'm sorry. Not being bleeped. Of Stevie J bleeping an unidentified white male while Diddy is filming there's video of that. There is so much stuff in this complaint. Remember all the people that came out and was defending Diddy? Remember all the people were like, well, I don't see what's so bad. Yo, they was in on it. They were about that. They were about that life. I'm telling y'all, whatever you're doing, give the kids those Oreos. Tell your boy, girl, whatever you're into that you got things to do. If you've been meaning to organize your closet, clean out your spice cabinet, clean your house, baby, I suggest you do it right now. This is a 19-page complaint, and it is graphic. Diddy in here is alleged. Now, I do have to say that this is an actual legal filing. It was just filed today. Again, this is what the plaintiff is alleging against Diddy and about 13 other people. He names Diddy's powerful people in on this. Names it. Y'all, this is the lawsuit that we were promised. This is what we wanted. But do you know what the really wild thing is? Do you know the really wild thing that I was like, yo, I think Diddy actually wants to get caught. I think there's actually something going on. Y'all, the wild thing about this is, right? Do you know all this was going on while he was negotiating his settlement with Cassie? All this ish was going on currently. Ain't no the Survivors Act. It was all going on while he was currently negotiating his settlement with Cassie. He was wiling out underage people drinking alcohol. De Leon as it at parties. And there are pictures of everything. Y'all, you can't make this up. You really can't make this up, y'all. Let's get into this mess. I wanted to make sure that we had the actual uh, court documents. Y'all, this is, wow. This is, the, the images are so graphic. I can't even show them on YouTube. That's how crazy this is. That's how crazy this is. Let's get into this. Hey, really quick, Lucifer Ratzinger, thank you so much for the super sticker. And also Busy Bee, thank you so much, y'all. Don't forget the members only Monday. It's going to be later on. I'm going to hop on. I meant to do it now, but baby, we got this hot off the presses and we have to get into this. Things just got real. There are pictures of Stevie J going to Pound Town with an unidentified white male. Y'all, is this why everybody in the industry is keeping quiet or defending Diddy? Do he got material on everybody? Is this the way? Didn't Cat Williams tell us? Diddy is persistent. He going to try and you got to tell him no because he won't stop. Is this? A yes. Love and hip hop. Stevie J. Eve Stevie J, Jocelyn Stevie J, 
Molly the maid. I'm just joking. Um, what's her name? God, J Jocelyn. What's the girl's name? Mimi. Mimi Stevie J. That's Stevie J. Y'all, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. That's what I said. What? Yeah, <laughs> you heard me right. I did not stutter. I the the video, the pictures are in the complaint. I cannot put them on uh the screen because YouTube will literally, literally. Li <laughs> YouTube, let me see if I can put a little bit in. Hold on. This is some. This is some. You guys, so I can't even show the pictures. The pictures are graphic. They got the stick and the and the rocks. Oh, the this is Stevie J. A unidentified white male and Diddy. Wasn't Stevie J defending? Baby, when I tell you this lawsuit is wild, baby, that Stevie J is involved. Let me just get to the lawsuit, right? Which I want to start with the Stevie J stuff. Okay, first of all, let's start with the top of this lawsuit. Rodney Jones. Remember little Rod that came out a couple of weeks ago and he was like, yo, Diddy owes me money. He's a child prodigy producer. Ah, 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 this, that, and the third. He came out a couple of weeks ago and was like, yo, Diddy owes me money and blah, 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 blah. And the truth will be told. And I remember being like, all right, like pay the man his money. Why didn't Diddy pay his money? Well, guess what? That same person, Rodney Jones, has come out and he has chronicle, chronicled the way Diddy is an unrepentant monster, what he did to him, what he did to others, what he did to others and forced them to be taped. He is filing suit against Sean Combs. He is filing suit against Justin Dior Combs, Ethiopia Hapatamariam. Lucian Charles's Grange, Nicole, who is it? Sophia Richie's, I believe, father-in-law. Lucian Charles Grange, Christina Corum, that's Diddy's personal assistant. Chalice Recording Studios. Remember, I told you that my sources said that there was a ping ping that Diddy and Justin were involved with at Chalice Recording Studios in Los Angeles. Did I lie? Did I stutter? Is actually listed in this. Chalice Recording Studios, Love Records, Motown Records. Universal Music Group, Combs Global Enterprises, John and Jay Doe's 1 to 10, and ABC Corporations. They start off by saying this document contains highly graphic information of a blank nature, including blank assault. Additionally, there are graphic images of the aftermath of a pow pow, redacted images of blank intercourse, redacted images of minors, redacted images of blank workers, and uh, uh, prostitutes. They separated between blank workers and prostitutes. Details of blank trafficking and illegal distribution of papals and drugs. Yeah. Diddy is going down. Listen, let me put this on the screen. Who is the attorney? Is this Wigmore? There are two um, attorneys that are suing. There is Douglas Wigmore, and there is attorney, let me go to the right, Tyrone A. Blackburn. Tyrone A. Blackburn Law, PLLC. So Douglas Wigmore has half the people suing. I believe that was Cassie's lawyer, this and that. Tyrone A. Blackburn Law, PLLC. Baby, we don't know who would ever tend to disagree, but Tyrone, this I, I assume he's the brother, Tyrone Blackburn, I assume, but these days you never know. This man, whoever he is, put his foot in it. Hold on. Hello. Hey. I'm on live right now. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Hello. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Okay, back to the drama. This person, Tyrone A. Blackburn, I assume he's a black man with the name Tyrone, but like I said, these days you never know, right? Tyrone's a lovely name. Put his foot in it. This 
ends it. Not only Diddy, but the entire recording industry and all the deviant, nasty things they're up to. Y'all, why didn't Diddy settle this? This is crazy. Like, it, what's his plan? Is Diddy planning on just retiring completely? Does he think he's going to beat this? Does he think anybody's ever going to walk down the street holding his hand? Does he not think that the feds are not two seconds from his butt? Y'all, let's get into this. You know what? Let me put this on uh, the screen really quick. The filing dropped. This is ridiculous. Y'all, just to let you know how crazy. You know what? Let me put some of uh, these people on the screen so y'all can get a glimmer and a glimpse. I don't know why, um, honestly, uh, Diddy did not settle the stuff that's alleged in here, y'all, is sick. I just want to put this on the screen and then I'll start reading from the complaint. Because again, keep in mind that when you hear the sick stuff, all of it was going on while he was negotiating with Cassie. He never stopped, which makes me believe that did he want to get caught? You know how like Jeffrey Dahmer and mass murderers, when they're at their thing, they're like, ha, ah, Mr. Agent, you figured it out? Y'all, have you ever thought that Diddy actually wants to get caught because everything that's going on in this lawsuit happened while he was in negotiations to settle with Cassie. And just like Cassie, his lawyer let this come out because for some reason they believe that the, that, the, that the public is going to what? Forgive? Forget? Let this go? Baby, where is Chris Hansen? Baby, where is the state attorney general? Where is the DA? Dit is a monster. Let me just, I'm going to do a little slideshow for you guys. I'm just throwing some stuff in here so y'all can actually see and know this lawsuit is 100% authentic, 100% real, and it ain't going nowhere. What is wrong with Diddy? Listen, I will say one thing. If any of y'all have any issue with anybody, be it your boss, be it the, 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 the bouncer at the door, be it another Diddy-like person, or be it Diddy, all I can say is, all I can say is, you better call Tyrone. That is Tyrone A. Blackburn. You better call Tyrone. This, mm, You better call him and get, listen, maybe he's still taking cases. I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I, I can't believe Diddy let this. Okay, so listen, I'm just loading this up and airdropping this video to myself so I can put it on screen and we can go through this complaint together. Again, this complaint has to be highly redacted for YouTube because when I say it is gory, baby, it were the it is gory. When y'all are like, what's Stevie J got to do with it? That is literally I like Kiki Palmer screenshots, screenshots of Stevie J going to pound town on an unidentified white male. Why Diddy's taping it and someone's taping Diddy. Baby, let's get into this. 18 pages. Mm, mwah, no bars. Tyrone Blackburn ate this. No bars. Okay. Uh, let me just drop this to myself. Hold on, y'all. It's coming. Just hold on. I'm coming home. Hold on, y'all. This came in hot off the presses. It just got filed. But I want y'all to know it's real because y'all be doubting. And plus, if y'all like me, I'd be doubting too. I want receipts. I want receipts yesterday. Let's get into this. Okay. We are Gucci. Hold on. My, my name is Tisa and Gucci think I love them. Hold on. Here we go. Here we go. This is in the United States. Oh, God, I hate when I ruin my own reveal. Hold on, y'all. This is in the, this is Rodney Jones, who is the plaintiff. He is the first of Diddy's male FO victims to come forward. You guys, this is groundbreaking. Up until now, we have heard the way he preyed on women. We heard the way the men in the music industry was staying quiet. But baby, now we see why they are staying quiet. Because they are either victims themselves or they was bit busy enjoying those violent delights that got violent ends with Diddy. What, who is being sued? We know Sean Combs. Justin is being sued. 
Justin Dior Combs is being sued. Ethiopia Habtamarium. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Habtamarium. Lucy and Charles Grange. Christina Corum, Diddy's longtime assistant. Chalice Recording Studios. Go watch my, well, not now, but I told you I did a thing on Chalice Recording and the way there was a ping ping that happened at Chalice Recording Studios on, I believe, in, in Los Angeles where Justin's best friend was ping ping And it was Diddy, Justin, and Justin's best friend. And J Justin's best friend was ping ping And I believe Justin's best friend, even, I, don't quote me on this, but somebody told me that he might have lost a leg. But we do know that the shooting occurred because there are pictures in this lawsuit of a bathroom with tissue, bloodstained tissue everywhere and a trail of blood all over it. I can't even show half these pictures. Um, Love Records, Motown Records, Universal Music Group, Combs Global Enterprises, John and Jane Jones, 1 through 10, and ABC Corporations, 1 to 10, baby. Tyrone A. Blackburn is set to take down the music indust uh, uh, industry. This is a civil action, and there is a jury demand. Again, they have uh, Charles, they have... Um, uh, uh, Justin and they have uh, defendant Sean Combs. Let's see what they say about each of them because they actually give this reads like a crime novel. They actually, this is a well written complaint, if I do not say this. They said defendant Justin, mm, defendant Justin Dior Combs is the son of Mr. and Miss, Mr. Combs and Misa Hilton. Um, Da, 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 da. Defendant Lucian Grange is the CEO and defend uh, 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 of is the CEO of Universal Music Group. The CEO of Universal Music is involved in Diddy's mess. Defendant Ethiopia Habitamarian is the former CEO of Motown Records, the parent company of Love Records. Baby, he is showing pictures of them. Let them be named. Let them be shamed. Let the truth come out. Christina Corum, chief of staff to Sean Diddy Combs. Um, the, and also, Chalice Recording Studios is a popular recording studio in Los Angeles. Motown Records, of course, defended to Universal Music Group, is a record label with a principal place. Okay, doesn't matter. Love Records and also Col Col mm. Combs Enterprises is a diverse portfolio of businesses and investments that includes music, fashion, fragrance, beverage, marketing, film. You sure it still includes beverage? I'm just saying, didn't he sell De Leon? Beverage, mar oh wait, no, they have water. Okay, marketing, film, television, and media properties. Woo! Now let's hear about Rodney, uh, little, uh, little Rod Jones, okay? Baby, we gotta take this slow. I will do a recap tomorrow morning of all, actually even tonight, of all this information if you only got 10 minutes to listen, but this is a 19 page Filing, baby, we got to get into this. We got to get into this. Okay. So, uh, they let's talk about L Rodney Little Rod Jones. Rodney Little Rod Jones Jr. is from the Windy City Child Chi Town. He was born and raised in Chicago. Mr. Mr. Jones is the second oldest son and fourth child out of nine siblings. Mr. Jones comes from a long line of gospel music influencers. Okay. Okay, sorry guys. Anyway, um, more about I people texting me, interrupting my flow. Hold on, everybody. Like I think they don't think they don't think I'm live, but I'm live, guys. Please stop texting me. Okay, now, Mr. Jones. Hold on. Okay. Hold on, guys.
Okay. So in any case, right? These are all public records, you guys. Calm down. They're public records. Thank you for your concern. But these are public records. Okay. So in any case, um, and these are business addresses, okay? In any case, let's get into this. Mr. Jones uh, comes from a long line of gospel music influencers. You guys, these are public records. You can go to the New York court systems. They are there. It's fine. Everybody calm down. Mr. Jones started playing instruments at the age of five. He began playing drums in church, and at the age of 13, he picked up playing the guitar. From 13 to present day, Mr. Jones has taught himself to play over 13 instruments, all right? Um, he started playing at the age of five, 13 instruments. Let me just go through this. They're telling who he is. Rod, Little Rod is considered to be a musical prodigy. His talents have led him to produce and create commercial marketplace for music that has been recorded by some of the most prestigious and highly acclaimed artists in music history. Throughout the duration of his career, Mr. Jones has worked on the south side of Chicago music scene, playing with the following legendary greats, Georgia Mass Choir, Donald Lawrence, the Clark sisters, and Smokey Norfolk. Oh, he's deep in the church. On or about August 2022, Little Rob received a call from Diddy requesting that he produce several songs on a rhythm and blues album titled The Love Album, Off the Grid. Little Rod agreed, and his life has been detrimentally impacted ever since. Okay, just to let you guys know, um, this started off on August 2022. I do want to know what Diddy, why he didn't settle, because if you know anything about statute of limitations, you don't even need the New York Survivors Act to even talk about this, um, to even press charges. He's still within the statute of limitations. Summary of events from September 2022 to November 2023. Little Rock produced nine songs on Mr. Combs' love album. Little Rock lived with, oh, he lived with Diddy for months at a time, spending holidays, birthdays, and missing major family events. Little Rock resided at Diddy's residence located in Los Angeles, California, New York City, and Miami, Florida. Little Rod has spent several weeks on a yacht rented by Diddy in the U.S. Virgin Islands. Oh, he got all the receipts. Throughout this time, throughout his time with Mr. Combs, Little Rock witnessed, experienced, and adored many things that went far beyond his role as producer on the Love album. The claims raised in this complaint, well, you guys, this isn't even, we're getting to the juicy part. The claims raised in this event, in this uh, uh, complaint, have been corroborated through witness statements, audio, video recordings and images that Little Rod has in his possession. Diddy required Little Rod to record him constantly. On several occasions, Diddy took Little Rod's cell phone and began recording, him, and began recording himself. As a result, Little Rod has secured hundreds of hours of footage and audio recordings of Diddy, his staff, and his guests engaging in serious illegal activity. Little Rod has secured irrefutable evidence of the acquisition, the use, and distribution of E... I'm speaking in Coke, so I want to get demonetized. E... Um, Coca... Cola... GHB... Ketamine... Oh, God. Mary J and Mushrooms... Is this not what Jonathan Adi said that Diddy and Cassie were into down in Miami? And now you got Little Rod, a second F-O, a male F-O, but he's actually suing, actually saying what he's in. And does this not sound exactly like Cassie said was happening with Diddy? Baby, this is the tip of the iceberg. I'm only on page seven. We got about 12 more pages to go. And baby, it gets dark and ugly. Str Listen, trigger warning for anybody. If you're like, Time to tap out if it's too much for you, okay? He would witness and videotaped and filmed the displaying and distribution of unregistered illegal firearms. Did he providing laced alcoholic beverages to minions, people that don't got 18 candles on their cake, 
Diddy providing laced alcoholic beverages to minions and blank workers at his homes in California, New York, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Florida. Again, they say that the writer, I guess this is Tyrone, a Blackburn, the lawyer, spoke with several employees on the yacht rented by Diddy in the U.S. Virgin Islands who personally witnessed Defendant Corum, I guess that's the personal assistant, the girl, instruct her staff, Brendan Paul, Frankie Santanelli, and Moy Bon spike bottles of champagne with E. You guys, can we just pause? Because can we just can we just pause and just say in the that we've I've only started reading, right? Let me just bring y'all up to date. He says that he has hundreds of hours of videotape. He's saying the illicit drugs. He's saying the illegal bang bangs, firearms. He's also saying that the lawyer spoke with several employees of the yacht Diddy Rents when he's out partying in the middle of nowhere, right? When he's out partying in the middle of nowhere. Oh my God, young Miami is in this? Okay, I, I, I'm going too fast. Let me slow down. There's a lot involved in this, right? They spoke and the yacht staff said they personally witnessed Diddy's assistant. What's her name? Diddy's assistant, Christina, tell the staff, this is Diddy's staff, to spike bottles of champagne with E. Oh my God. Why didn't he settle? Oh my God. Okay. Diddy's chief of staff, Christina, they call her KK, instructing her staff to retrieve rugs. I'm going to have to speak in code. Y'all figure it out. To retrieve rugs so she can provide it to Diddy for his consumption. Like a Hoover vacuum cleaner. Chris, Christian Combs rugging and blank assaulting a woman. There's a footnote. That complaint is forthcoming. Apparently, they're going to file a complaint about that. It's not over. Diddy detailing how he planned to leverage his relationship with Bishop T.D. Jakes to soften the impact of his public image of the Cassie Ventura lawsuit? He has videotape of this. Young Miami's cousin and or assistant blank assaulting Little Rod, actor Cuba Gooding Jr. blank harassing and assaulting Little Rod. Rapper, they redacted this name, on Mr. Combs' yacht consorting with minions, people that don't got 18 candles on their cake, if you know what I'm saying. Minions, female minions, blank workers, Who's this rapper? They said redacted. Rapper redacted, footnote three. A Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. <laughs> Yo, I like this Tyrone Blackburn. He's funny. So basically, if this can be believed, they said that an, a, a rapper, however, he is described as a Philadelphia rapper who dated Nicki Minaj. It sounds like Meek Mills to me. A Philadelphia rapper who dated uh, Nicki Minaj. Let me know if you know if it's anyone outside of Meek Mills, because I think this Meek Mills on Diddy's yacht consorting with girls that don't have 18 candles on their cake. Blank workers and an R&B singer redacted in Mr. Combs' Los Angeles home consorting with underaged minions and blank workers. Um, Who's the fourth? He's a Grammy award-winning R&B singer who had trouble with law enforcement after assaulting a Bayesian billionaire. Um, do you guys know any Bayesian uh, billionaires? I think that's Rihanna. If he's an R&B singer, Grammy award-winning who had trouble with law enforcement, that means that he also has videotape of Chris Brown in Diddy's Los, uh, a Los Angeles home consorting with minions that don't have 18 candles on their cake and blank workers. Oof. My God, you guys, this is just the summary of events. Now we're going to get into the specifics. 
It goes into Chalice Recording Studios. Bang, bang. Shooting. On or about September 12, 2022, Diddy held a writers and producers camp at Chalice Recording Studio at 845 Highland Ave, Los Angeles, California, 90038. Before I get even deeper into this lawsuit, because this is some dark stuff, let me just say that what I am saying and reporting is directly from the public filing. This is public information. It is based upon my information and belief. This court filing, many court filings, Cassie's court filings, as well as blogs, internet, and of course what the streets are saying. It should be known that nothing has been independently verified nor confirmed or or um verified or um proven to be false. So nothing has been true proven to be true or false. These are allegations coming from Little Rod that he has uh, he has filed in US New York federal court, I believe the Southern District of New York SDNY. Now Diddy has not responded to this. We did not reach out to Diddy for his response. This has just hit the court systems. However, um, Diddy has said in prior complaints that he is innocent. It is untrue. He is going to fight for his life. He says he is a victim of cancel culture. And that is why all this is being said. And that he will eventually prove that he is, right? He will prove and be vindicated that he is 100% innocent of all the awful things. Now, he has not commented on this publicly, but I'm willing to guess that is position because how else would this come out if he is not thinking or even trying to claim that he is innocent, okay? Now that I've said that, let's get back into what these court filings are saying because, baby, okay. On or about September 12, 2022, Diddy held a writer's and producer's camp at Chalice Recording Studio in Los Angeles. Present at this camp was Diddy, his son Justin, and Justin's friend named G. Mr. G is a 30-year-old, tall, African-American man. In addition to these individuals, other musicians were present at the camp. This writer has spoken, again, I'm assuming that this is Tyrone A. Blackburn is writing it, um, has spoken to several musicians who attended the camp. One evening during this camp, Diddy, Justin Combs, and G were in a he heated conversation. That conversation was moved out of the studio and into a restroom adjacent to where Little Rod was sitting. Little Rod was approximately two feet away from the bathroom when gunshots rang out. Bang! Bang! Little Rob recalls hearing multiple gunshots. Little Rod immediately went into a state of shock and feared he'd be shot next. Little Rod genuinely believed that he would be shot through the door due to how close he was. After the shooting ended, a, a crowd gathered around the restroom. When the door finally opened, Diddy and Justin Combs exited. G was lying on the restroom floor in a fetal position, holding his stomach and bleeding out of his leg and hip area. Everyone stood around looking at G. Frustrated by the lack of aid to G, Little Rod dropped everything, ran to G, and immediately began placing pressure on G's uh, G-shot wound to his stomach. As he was applying pressure to his stomach, Little Rob realized that G was gushing, gushing blood from another area near his leg and hip. He decided to lift G and he placed him to sit on the toilet. Little Rod asked the crowd to call the ambulance. Call an ambulance. Call an ambulance. Little Rod lifted G and he brought him to the ambulance at the studio's front. At this time, Diddy and Justin disappeared to another part of the studio. Diddy gave strict instructions to inform the police that he had nothing to do with the shooting. He, he also forced Little Rod to lie to the police by telling them that G was shot standing outside the studio by a drive-by assailant. If you guys don't know, they actually do a... Um, uh, there's an actual in the complaint. There is a picture, a screenshot of a CBS news report. It's the one I found when I heard that there had been some type of 
shooting at Chala Studios. I even thought that it was like a bang bang or something weird, but people were saying, no, it happened in. You guys, this lawsuit is confirming that that's actually what happened. You guys, we're only on page nine. We got 10 more pages to go and things get darker, including Young Miami's cousin, including Stevie J going to pound town on an unidentified white male, including little Rod's drink being spiked and laced. Y'all. So right now we got Meek Mills and Chris Brown named and the head of CEO of Universal Records and the C, for, CEO of Motown Records and Diddy's assistant and Justin Combs. Y'all, listen, this is crazy. This is crazy. Again, CBS News has a screenshot. Man shot outside party at Hollywood Recording Studios. At least one person was shot at a party at a Hollywood Recording Studio. Police sent Monday. Officers were called to the 800 block of North Highland Ave at Willoughby to check the reports of a bang bang at about 3 a.m. According to LAPD, at the location, they found a man had been shot by, after stepping outside of a studio. The man in his 30s was taken to a hospital in stable condition. I'm reading from the CBS Action News. This is a screenshot from what's on. The man was uh, taken to a hospital in stable condition. He was reportedly blanked in the abdomen. Sky 2 was over the scene early Monday, spotted several people sitting outside the location being questioned by police. No information was released about the suspect, and it's not known if the shooting was gang-related. The man is in his 30s, was taken to the hospital in stable condition. Um, he was reportedly hit in the abdomen. Uh, da, 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 da. you guys, how are we not to believe that the reason why Diddy was able to get over this and get past this is because he has people in his pocket. Everybody wondered how Cassie felt scared to leave. Why nobody's speaking up? How is it that something happens in a studio? The recording studio has tape everywhere. They have video cameras, security cameras everywhere. That, that equipment is expensive. Tell me how all this happened. And Diddy, according to Little Rod, and according to this Clinton plaint, filed in the Southern District of New York, told everybody, don't say a word. And CBS News, the LAPD, TMMF and Z, TMZ loved, TMZ paid for pictures of Kobe Bryant, maybe rest in peace, and Natalia made they she rest in peace while laying there after they had passed and Pat paid for those and was passing it around. How didn't TMZ know about this? Honestly, how? And here's the thing: Diddy got this weird thing about Justin because remember when Diddy tried to split open Justin's football coaches or assistant football coaches head with a kettlebell, a kettlebell, because he literally was yelling at Justin during football practice. Do y'all remember that? Do y'all remember that? Y'all remember that? Y'all wonder how Diddy has been getting away with all this? That's a good question. I'm beginning to think, and these people need to be named. This goes beyond Diddy having the music industry on lock. This goes into, in my opinion, why didn't the police get this? The DAs, where was TMZ? Baby, this is just the beginning. Let's continue. Okay, so we're back in the studio. Little Rod, G was gushing. Little Rod called him outside, took him to the front door because Diddy was like, yo, don't tell anybody what happened. If anything happens, you tell them that it was a drive-by. Now, listen. This is off the subject, right? And again, if y'all don't want to hear all the the, the long version, because baby, we about to take the long uh, way from school home. We taking the long route from school, right? Um, I will do a recap when this live's over and then it will just be like, whatever. But we getting into this. Diddy was like, yo. Now, funny enough, does this not sound like what happened to Tupac and Biggie? Does it not? Even Diddy telling everybody, yo, keep your mouth shut. And everybody knows with the BS that Diddy is in so much, that guess what? They keep their mouth shut. They keep their, I'm struggling with this lip gloss. They keep, my lips are dry. They keep their mouth shut. Does it not sound like what happened with Biggie, with Tupac? I'm not implying that Diddy was involved. I am saying 
that Diddy really feel like sometimes the angel of death. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's go. Lips are lacquered. Let's get into this. Okay. Now we're back into the studio. Little Rod, I imagine, got blood all over him. Okay. Little Rod, uh, Little Rod has several cooperating witnesses who spoke with the writer, which is the attorney, anonymously due to fear of retaliation. They have agreed to speak publicly when subpoenaed. They have agreed to speak publicly when subpoenaed. Yo, I see why Diddy hired Bobby Sternheim, that criminal thing, and Sean Hawley. I see why. Whoever let this leak and didn't do a settlement, yo, I'm beginning to think that Diddy's lawyers are the ops.